parents decide to bank their baby's cord blood for unforeseen emergencies, but now it's being used to try and treat autism. The stem cell treatment is said to decrease inflammation, stimulate the brain, replace damaged neurons, and improve function. But scientific evidence to prove these benefits is lacking. We uncovered a number of crowdfunding pages where desperate parents seek thousands of dollars to get their children unproven treatments in the U.S. and abroad. We are back exposing a controversial autism treatment that uses stem cells from cord blood. So, Leslie, tell us, what did you uncover during the course of your investigation? This story has so many layers. Let's start with Duke. They're the only ones in the world that are doing clinical trials testing cord blood for autism. And so many people want to get in these studies, but there isn't enough room. Yeah. So Duke has actually opened up treatment possibilities through an expanded access program. So now people can get this treatment without being in the clinical trials, but it costs a ton of money. In fact, $15,000 for one infusion, and this is still an unproven treatment. And another layer to the story is that Duke has partnered with Cryocell, which is one of the biggest private cord blood banks in the country. Cryocell is also planning to open their own infusion clinics in 2022, where, where they'll be offering these same autism treatments using stem cells. And this is still an unproven treatment. On that note, let's bring in autism expert and psychologist Dr. Doreen Grandpache and developmental neurobiologist and author of The Future of Brain Repair, A Realist Guide to Stem Cell Therapy, Jack Price. So mm -hmm. Dr. Doreen, let's start with you. <laughs> what are your concerns with these cord blood treatments? My concerns are that there's a lot of uh, sort of anxiety and agitation and that comes to the child by going through these treatments. And of course that, as you saw, sometimes parents put all everything they have into these treatments, hope, money, um, and then the treatment fails. Yeah. But Dr. Doreen, you actually have a problem with the studies themselves. That's right. I do, absolutely, Leslie. When, you know, this study was based on an earlier study that was done in 2017 and in that study, they found that, okay, so it might have some sort of impact on the social behavior of children who have a nonverbal IQ over 70. So when they did this study, their goal was to only have children whose nonverbal IQ was over 70. Now, unfortunately, uh, something went on with the way that they tested the children over distances. And in the end, it ended up that only 56% of the children who participated actually had an IQ, nonverbal IQ over, over 70. So there's, there's issues with the study itself as well. 